Today we're talking about two brand new lenses from Surrey, right there. They did send me these lenses for free, but this video is not paid. They don't get to see the video. Everything I say is up to me. This is the 16 millimeter. This is the 75 millimeter. They are the sniper lenses from Surrey. Um, check this out. Amazon, Alexa, close all blinds. Okay. Smart wings blinds. I don't have to close like 10 blinds when the sun comes out. It does it for me. So they come in at normally about $800, but you can pick the setup for about $600 at the moment I've seen, which is pretty cool. You know, $600 for these two lenses is good. APS-C lenses. Um, I've been using them on my Sony ZV-E1, which is a full frame camera. It's basically like the A7S III, just a smaller version. And it's really, really great. They can be used on a full frame camera. When you turn it to photo, it basically goes straight into, you know, into 1.5 times crop. And when you have it on video, if it's not in 4K, you can use the crop. That's great. But if it's in 4K, you're either gonna have to use the clear image zoom. It's okay at about 1.3. There's no vignetting around the sides. But 1.5, you're 100% sure everything is really nice and clean. Now, clear mid zoom doesn't really destroy your image in any negative way. It works really well. It's this Sony kind of zoom inning kind of thing. It's it's really great. But if you don't want to use that, you can turn on dynamic stabilization, dynamic active, whatever the hell it's called, and then it zooms in, and you don't have any vignetting, and you have stabilized footage. So the 16 millimeter looks insanely good and the 75 millimeter looks also insanely good they're both very nice lenses they're got this kind of like the you know the siri satin kind of feel to them where you've got a little bit of metal a little bit of plastic a little bit of carbon fiber and you know they feel good they come in in a case like you can see here the case is nice it's a hard soft case so you basically can stick them all in there and you have the you know stuff that nobody uses so the lens hoods and um, you get everything in the actual boxes. If you want to get filters, you've got 67 millimeters on the 75 millimeter and you have 58 millimeters on the 16 millimeter. Now, f1.2, that's pretty wild. Now, the depth of field is just, it's mind blowing. It looks really, really nice. And I'm going to say it cinematic, YouTube cinematic, though no film is filmed on f1.2 unless you're an absolute nutter. So for $800, you can pick up these lenses were pretty fantastic. I'm going to show you some photos, which I took when I was in London. And after that, I'm going to show you some video of Kew Gardens, the Royal Botanical Gardens is really beautiful. And I was basically using these with dynamic stabilization on and I was handheld. That was it all the way and you can see how beautiful they are especially together 16 millimeter and 75 just look stunning they match each other really well because you've got this wide lens which has almost zero distortion and then you have this long lens that you can pick up some really nice clean shots with and matching them together in the video that you're about to see the kind of sequence i've put together of you know maybe a few, bit, a few shots of my children and you know plants and kew gardens um and the architecture there it looks really, really good. Now, if you do want to use these in manual, because sometimes you can find f1.2, you can get a little bit of pumping because these do have eye autofocus, but in a worst case scenario, you can use them in manual focus, which is the, the ring is, uh, it's, it's quite loose, hasn't got too much friction going on there. There isn't too much resistance. Um, but it allows you to grab focus really, really easy and nicely. And you also have USB-C on the back of both of these if you want a firmware update. Now, they also come in E, X, and Z mounts. The 75 millimeter weighs 466 grams, and the 16 millimeter weighs 384 grams. So it's, 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 it feels pretty light. This one. Yeah, they're both fairly light, so sticking them on a the gimbal or walking around with the Sony ZV-1, they both, they both feel, they both feel good. I do that just for you guys. Just, just there's always going to be one guy in the comments, isn't there? Um, <laughs> so yeah, so that's basically all about the lenses. Let's check out the photos and the footage, and you can actually see what they look like being used, right?
Royal Botanic Gardens, otherwise known as Kew Gardens London. With over 50,000 living plants to be found across this UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's quite spectacular. It is here that Philip braved the countless number of tourists and Ninja walked the famous gardens with his Sony ZV-E1 camera. All these shots you are witnessing are handheld, no gimbal was used. If you're asking yourself the question of how did Philip get gimbal-like shots, the answer is simple. The key to achieving such breathtaking butter-like frames was a quite worn pair of sketchers, heel-to-toe movements and dynamic stabilization set on the camera. Magic. From the famous Great Pagoda and Palm House to the ludicrous variety of plants, such as feisty carnivorous plants, and the treetop walkway that sways left and right whilst you walk high above the tree line, Kew Gardens offers you more than can possibly be imagined. Matching the 16 and 75 mm lenses is easier than one would imagine. The wide angle is a superb lens for establishing shots and dynamic frames when moving close to your surroundings, whereas the more classic and clean cut feeling the 75 mm offers us is perfect for punching in on portraits or close ups of flora and fauna. Both lenses proved excellent in automatic focus and were quick to lock on. The out-of-focus areas were sometimes fairly busy, and their bokeh quality was reminiscent of old Soviet lenses, delicately spiralling the background. When it comes to close-up shots of the wonderful flowers at Kew Gardens, the 75 came in quite handy. But with its aperture fully open, it sometimes did pump focus, so it's recommended that on some shots you go fully manual. It's worth stating that this occurrence, however, amounted to maybe 1% of the time, so it's nothing to worry about, as when focus is locked, it's beautifully sharp. Now you gotta admit, that looked stunning. These two lenses on the Sony ZV-1 full frame camera, they did a fantastic job. I really loved how it all turned out. The bokeh, the out of focus parts, I don't know if you noticed, sometimes they're a little bit busy, but I, th I think they were nice on both of these lenses. Um, we have 13 aperture blades and 15 aperture blades in the 75 millimeter. So that's why you get these really nice smooth looking shots. When it comes to flaring, it's it's fairly nice, like you saw in a few of the shots. The, the flaring is nicely controlled, chromatic aberration is almost non-existent, distortion is non-existent in these. Really nice set. For, for 800, if you can pick them up, 600, wow, there's going to be links down below. Um, you can pick these lenses up for APS-C cameras or for full-frame cameras. And you can have a really nice set of portrait lenses or filmmaking lenses. But there is a five set, so you can also pick up the 23, the 33, and the 56 millimeter. And they're all pretty quiet. They're all pretty similar in size. They all have STM motors. They're very, you know, focus is fast and quiet. When it comes to focus, we can check me out in the garden and you can have a look just how quickly it focuses.
looking at the camera. Come on, have a look, I'll show you. Here, wave to the camera. Wave. Okay. Wave to the camera. So that's not too bad. I mean, the 75mm, as you would expect, it's a little bit slower. And the 60mm is lightning fast. The f-stops, by the way, they go from f1.2 all the way down to f16. Um, I was using them in every single shot you saw at f1.2. Now, you can also get them in white and silver. I don't know why, but you can do. All filmmaking gear should be black. Just make it black, make everybody happy. Um, that goes for you as well, Zoom. Black. Everything should be black. All in all, very, very happy with these lenses. And as you can see, the focus does a really good job. I had 30 centimeters minimal focus on the 16 millimeter and 70 centimeters minimum focus on the 75 millimeter. So they do come in pretty, pretty close. All in all, I can highly recommend them. Um, I will be keeping them because I don't have any f1.2 lenses. I know they're APS-C, but as you can see, even on full frame, you can get a really, really funky look. Um, thanks to Suri for sending them out. Thanks to you guys for watching. And uh, remember, all links down below and, you know, tip your waitress on the way out.